Albatrosses are the most threatened group of birds in the world, with 15 of 22 species threatened with extinction. The rapid population declines being observed by scientists all around the world are largely being driven by accidental deaths in fisheries, also known as bycatch. Albatrosses travel thousands of miles routinely in search for their next meal and spend most of their lives soaring over the oceans looking for something to eat. So inevitably, this lifestyle brings them into contact with fishing vessels. Longline and trawl fisheries are particularly problematic for albatrosses. They become attracted to these vessels by the smell of offal being discarded overboard as the fishing crew processes their catch, or by the bait that's being used to lure in larger fish such as tuna. In longline fisheries, albatrosses get caught on large fishing hooks as they attempt to get to the squid and the fish that's being used as bait before it sinks out of their reach. And in trawl fisheries, they may become struck by trawl cables that are towing the net through the water as they engage in a feeding frenzy behind the vessel. Either way, this is a painful and needless death. It's estimated that at least 100,000 albatrosses are killed this way in fisheries every single year. That equates to about one every five minutes. Albatrosses are slow breeders and only reach sexual maturity after several years and even then only lay a single egg every year or every two years. So they simply can't replace the numbers of individuals being lost to fisheries fast enough. The good news is that simple and cheap solutions already exist to prevent these deaths from occurring in the first place. To bridge the gap between the scientists that develop these tools and techniques and the fishing crews that spend their lives at sea, BirdLife International and the RSPB jointly launched the Albatross Task Force in 2005. Since then, the dedicated men and women of the task force have been on a mission to reduce seabird bycatch by 80% in some of the world's deadliest fisheries for albatross. By working on board vessels, showing fishing crews simple ways to stop killing birds, and with national governments to implement seabird bycatch regulations, the Albatross Task Force has shown that things can drastically change for the better. The South African trawl fishery has been a shining example of how this can work, with an amazing 99% reduction in albatross deaths since we started working there in 2006. Our team of international seabird bycatch experts are also involved in developing and trialling new ways of preventing seabird bycatch in fleets for which no effective mitigation measures currently exist. Bird scaring lines keep birds away from potentially lethal fishing gear and bycatch can also be reduced by fishing at night when fewer birds are foraging or by making baited longline hooks sink faster thus reducing the window of opportunity for birds to get caught. In Chile, for example, the Albatross Task Force has been working with fishers and net makers to reduce the mesh size and the configuration of the nets used in the artisanal purse seine fleet. We've shown time and time again that the grassroots engagement done by the Albatross Task Force does deliver real results and we're on track for achieving significant bycatch reductions in several fleets across countries in South America and Southern Africa. By working through the BirdLife International Partnership and with local conservation organizations all around the world, we've also helped provide an alternative source of income for local people from disadvantaged backgrounds by teaching them how to build seabird bycatch mitigation measures such as bird scaring lines that can then be sold on to the fishing industry. But to properly protect albatrosses, we must ensure that these successes are implemented on a truly global scale and that fishing fleets all around the world are fishing in seabird friendly ways. The bycatch reductions achieved thus far demonstrate the art of the possible and can serve as an inspiration, but there's undoubtedly a lot of work left to be done. We will continue to work with governments, fishing crews, scientists and local people all around the world to help ensure that our seas are kept safe for our beloved albatross. But since they are slow breeders, it will likely take many, many years until we start to see their populations stabilize and recover. Until then, 
All we really know is that we're saving thousands of albatrosses every year as the result of our work. And that can surely only be a good thing.